Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Open Sesame. Open Sesame is a software package designed for the easy creation and running of psychology experiments. It can be downloaded for free from www.cogsci.nl. On this website you'll find installation instructions for all major platforms including Windows, Mac OS X and Linux. So let's look at some of the things we can do with Open Sesame. With Open Sesame we can easily build up experiments using different components that will allow us to for example, present images, place text on the screen, play sounds, and even display video clips. We can collect responses from participants, and OpenSesame will write the collected data to a file for later analysis. It uses a standard file format, comma separated values or CSV, which can be read by virtually all data preparation and analysis packages, including Microsoft Excel and SPSS. OpenSesame uses a plugin architecture, allowing for the easy integration with other equipment such as the iLink eye tracker from SR Research and the serial response or SR box from PST. Finally, if you know how to program using the Python language, you can easily insert Python code into the experiment to do pretty much anything. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at the general usage of OpenSesame and how you could implement a simple experiment in the program. Let's begin by taking a tour of the interface. So this is the main interface to OpenSesame. It's comprised of four main panels and we'll take a look at each of these panels in turn. The first panel is the main toolbar which is located at the top of the window. It's comprised of a series of icons that allow us to perform basic operations inside of the program. We'll take a look at each of these group of icons in turn. The first group deal with basic file functions such as creating a new script, opening a script or saving the current script we're working on to the disk. These three options work exactly the same way as they would do in any other computer program. The next three icons allow us to actually run our experiment. We have three choices. We can run full screen, which is probably how we'd normally run our experiments, but we can also choose to run the experiment in a window if we wish. We can also perform a quick run as well, which will basically get the experiment up and running quite quickly, just so we can check to see that everything's running smoothly. The next two icons deal with Open Sesame's tabbing system. Every time you open up a new object in Open Sesame, it will create a new tab in the tab area for that particular object. Now if you've only got a small experiment with maybe two or three up to about ten objects, it's not too bad because uh, you can easily deal with those number of tabs open at one particular time. However, if you've got quite a large experiment with potentially 20, 30 objects in it, it can become quite unwieldy actually having all those different tabs open. So these two options allow us to actually deal with these tabs a little bit better. The first thing we can do is close all other tabs. Essentially what this will do is close every other tab apart from the selected one. So you could have, say, 20 tabs open, you select one of them, click on close other tabs, and it will close the other 19 tabs to leave you with just the one. You can also prevent Open Sesame from opening up multiple tabs in the first place by selecting the one tab mode. This way, whenever you open up a new object, it will just replace the current tab. Personally, I quite like to use the one tab mode, so I'm going to select it right now. But it is a personal preference. You may actually choose that you prefer to have all the different tabs available to you at all times. The next three icons will show or hide various windows within the main interface. The first will show the file pool, which allows us to add pictures and sounds to our experiment. The second will show the variable inspector, so we can actually check the names of variables, particularly useful if when we come to look at the uh, logging item, see which variables we actually want to record to disk. And the last one will show the debug window, particularly useful if you've got an experiment that keeps crashing for some reason, you can't figure out why, or if you're using some inline Python code and you've got some problems there, the debug window will actually display output messages that you can put inside those inline scripts. The final two icons deal with Open Sesame's help system. Two straightforward options, one for offline help, basically the files that come with Open Sesame's installation, and the online help, which will go out to the Cogside or NL website, uh, so you can look at the latest information on the web. The next panel we'll look at is the item toolbar. The item toolbar contains a series of icons that re represent different items that we can add to our experiment. For example, we could add a loop item, which contains a list of all our trials, or we could put in a sketchpad item, 
that contains pictures, text and so on. These objects form the building blocks of our experiment. The next area to look at is the overview window. It contains the outline of our experiment and how our experiment is actually constructed. By default, from the default template, we have this thing called new experiment, which is a experiment object. And if we have a click on that object, you'll see in the tab area, we've got all details about the experiment. For example, what its resolution is and what the colors are and so on. Uh, we also then have a sequence uh, object, which basically a sequence object contains a list of different objects that are going to be run throughout our experiment. So if we try to run this experiment, for example, what we'd actually see is nothing in this getting started section, because this is actually just a notepad item. I'll open that up. This is just a bit of text from the author of Open Sesame, but it would run this sketchpad item, which displays some stimuli on the screen. In this particular case, it displays the message uh, Open Sesame and the version number. By way of a quick demonstration, I'll just use the quick run feature. And you can just have a look at what would have been displayed. That's what we'd actually get uh, in that particular sketchpad item. So you note that for the moment. If you're creating quite a complicated experiment, it's a good idea to keep an eye on what's happening with the overview window, as it can help you sort out any problems that you might run into. The final area to look at is the tab area, which is located on the right hand side of the screen. It's basically where we do our main work inside of Open Sesame, for example, defining our trials and deciding where we're going to place stimuli on the screen and so on. So that's a quick tour of the interface. Let's have a look now at an experiment that we can actually implement in Open Sesame. So let's take a look at the experiment we're going to implement inside of Open Sesame. It's quite a straightforward experiment where we're going to present participants with pictures of cat faces, like the one we've got on the screen at the moment, and ask them to make a decision about whether they think that cat is male or whether they think that cat is female, just by looking at the photograph. They'll indicate their responses by pressing one of two keys on the keyboard. Let's just say we'll get them to press Z if they think it's a male cat and M if they think it's a female cat. This one actually, by the way, is a female cat. This is the general structure of the experiment. We'll give them some instructions to begin with. They've got to know what they're going to do after all. We'll then present them with a fixation point, then a blank screen, and then we'll present the picture of the cat face onto the screen. Now the fixation point and the blank screen might be set for a particular duration. We may say 500 milliseconds for both, but we'll have the picture of the cat face on the screen until the participant actually makes a response. Finally, at the end of the experiment, we'll give them a thank you message to say thanks for taking part in the study. Now, of course, this will only display one particular cat face. What we'd actually want to do is display multiple cat faces. So we're going to actually run through this particular section of the experiment for the number of cat face pictures that we have, which is 40 in this particular case. We have 20 males and we have 20 female cats. Now, this is one way of drawing out this particular experiment, but if I just rotate the experiment through 90 degrees, I can just plot it slightly differently. So now we've got the instructions as the first object in the list, followed by the experiment that's going to take some kind of form, and then the thank you message at the end. We can think of this as being the global structure of the experiment. Beyond the global structure of the experiment, we actually have what takes place during the main experiment itself. In this particular case, it's the quite straightforward three objects where we display fixation point, blank screen, and the particular cat face that we loop through 40 times. Now there is a reason behind actually plotting the experiment this particular way. And that is, if you think back to the part on the interface window, where we looked at the overview area, you can start to see how there's some similarities between drawing the experiment out this way and the way that the experiment appears in that overview window. And as we build up the experiment, we can always think back to this particular diagram to make sure that the experiment's been built up in the way that we expected it to be built up. So let's now take a look at how, actually how we're going to put this experiment inside of Open Sesame itself. So here we are back inside of Open Sesame. When we open it up, we've got the default template opened up, which contains a very simple structure to an experiment, which contains the sequence, which contains two objects, which is a getting started notepad message, and a sketchpad item called welcome, which just displays the name of the program and the version number on the screen. Now I don't need either of these getting started notepad or welcome sketchpad displays, so I'm going to delete them out of the experiment. To do this, I just right click and select delete. And do the same for the welcome object. Now they haven't actually been permanently deleted by this stage. You'll actually see if I click on this disclosure triangle here for unused items, you can see they're actually sitting down here now in this unused items section. Uh, 
You could think of the unused items as a bit like the recycle bin uh, located in Windows. To actually get rid of these two objects uh, permanently, you need to select the unused items and then the option for permanently delete unused items. So I'm going to select that. And I'll say, uh, yes, I'm happy that these are all going to be permanently deleted. So now we've got a nice clean environment uh, for our experiment to be created. Something else I'm going to do just before I even start creating the experiment is go to the Preferences tab and enable the option that says Offer to rename new items immediately. Now every time we drag an item into the experiment, if you don't give it a name straight away, it was coming with some default names like uh, Sketchpad, and then if you add another Sketchpad in, it would be called underscore Sketchpad. If you add a third one in, it would be called underscore underscore Sketchpad. And uh, you have to basically go into each object and give it a name each time. That can get a bit uh, tiresome, so I'm going to select the option to offer to rename new items immediately. And this basically means that whenever we put an object into the experiment, for example a sketch pad, we get a little dialog box up asking us for the name uh, of that object uh, to be named immediately. And it's quite a nice little feature that one. The other thing I'm going to do before we even get started on creating the experiment is click on the new experiment object. This contains some basic properties uh, of our experiment. The first thing I can do is actually give our experiment a meaningful name, not just a new experiment anymore. So I'll just click on that and we'll call it Cat's Faces Study. A couple other things I can also change. I could change the back end if I wanted to. Um, now the back ends are basically the way that the stimuli are actually presented on the screen. Essentially, Open Sesame takes your ideas about what the experiment should be doing and tells another package exactly what to put on the screen. It's that other package that actually displays it on the screen itself. By default, on this particular version of OpenSesame for OS X, it's defaulting to the experiment uh, backend, and I'm just going to leave it on that particular uh, backend. However, it's worthwhile checking the cogsci.nl website and read the section on the different properties of the different backends. There's some advantages to some and some disadvantages to some, so it's worth double checking that before you actually run in your experiment. The other thing I'll also do is going to check, I'm going to change the resolution uh, that we're going to display in here. By default, it's set to 1024 by 768. Uh, I'm going to actually set it to the uh, screen resolution that I'm running, which is 7, uh, 1280 by 720, like so. And the other thing I also want to change are the colors. The default is to have a white foreground and a black background. So basically, uh, you could say white text on a black background. I'm actually going to swap those over. So I'm going to have a black text appearing on a white background. And that's all I'm going to change in this particular, uh, particular panel. I'm also going to save the experiment now just so I've got everything nicely set up. Um, and in case anything happens, I'll be easier to go back to the uh, clean layout we've set up. There we go. I'm just going to dump it on the desktop for the time being. I get this message about, do I want to use the correct extension? So I'll say that I will do. Okay, so if we look over at the overview area, you can see we've got this thing called cat faces study and then a single sequence called experiment. What we want to do is place our experiment onto that experiment sequence. Now, if you think back to the diagram we drew earlier on where we had uh, three objects uh, in a list, there was the uh, instructions at the very, very top, followed by the experiment object, followed by the thank you message. What we basically want to do is recreate that global structure initially in this overview window. To do that, I'm going to need to display some text on the screen somehow. Uh, I then need to have a list of trials that contain my actual main experiment, and then I need to have a, some other text on the screen, so I need something else also that's going to display some text at the very end of the experiment for the thank you message. There's multiple ways we can actually display text on the screen. Uh, the most obvious one is to use the uh, text display object, which is this uh, A over here. Now this particular uh, plugin is no longer actively developed, uh, so it's actually, we get an advice to use the, um, uh, the, the form object instead. So I'll actually just add it in for the sake of it. I'm not going to name it because I'm not actually going to use it. We get this deprecation warning uh, that forms are faster and more flexible than the text display plugin. For that reason, I'm actually going to use uh, a form instead to display our text upon our screen. So I'll just get rid of that. And the form item we'll actually be using is this particular uh, form text render object over here. Now, as you saw just a moment ago, I can just pick up the object and drag it into the overview window. 
but there's a second way that I can add objects to the experiment, and that's by clicking on the sequence and then selecting from either existing items here or we can append a brand new item here. I'm going to use append new item and select the form text render and then click on the plus. I'm asked to name it immediately because we asked uh, OpenSesame to offer uh, our, us to uh, rename the objects as soon as we create them. So I'm just going to call this one instructions if I can spell that properly. There we go. Now what the uh, form text render object will do is just display some text upon the screen but it won't actually take any input from the keyboard or anything. What we really want to happen is the text should be displayed on the screen and then for Opus Sesame to sit there and wait until the participant does something to indicate that they're ready to start the study. What we can do here to achieve this is add a new item and we can add a keyboard response in. And basically what's going to happen here with this keyboard response is that Opus Sesame will hit this particular object and then just wait until we get a key press that's going to tell the, the experiment to actually get going. So I'm going to select that and click on the plus. I'm going to give it a name again. I'm going to call this one space response. And the reason I'm calling it space response is we're going to set it up so that it only responds to the space bar. Therefore, in the instructions, we'll say to the participant, press the space bar to begin the study. By calling this space response, it reminds me that this particular object is going to be set up to use the space bar. So I'll click on OK. So that first little box is now completed uh, from our diagram of the experiment. This is going to display some instructions and it's going to have something there to uh, wait for the participant's response. Next thing we need to do is add in uh, something that's going to contain all our trials. And we add trials in using the loop sequence, or loop object, I should say. I'll click on the plus to add that in. And we get another dialog box come up that asks us that, uh, well, a loop needs another item to run, and it's usually a sequence. Uh, so I can actually create a new item here, or I can select an existing item to add to the loop. I'm actually just going to create a new item, which is going to be a new sequence. Uh, this is actually going to be our experimental sequence, basically that second level containing the fixation point, the blank screen, and then the picture of the cat face. So I'll click on the plus, and ask for uh, a new name for the loop. I'll just call it experiment loop. And new name for the sequence, we'll call this uh, trial sequence. And there we are, those have been created. I'm going to hide the trial sequence for the moment. So that will run through our main experiment. Then we need to display the thank you message at the end of the experiment. And I'm going to do that exactly the same sort of way that we did for the instructions. So I'm going to append a new item again, which will be a text render. I'll click on plus, and this is going to be goodbye for the goodbye message. And then I want to add in another one of these space responses, because we, what we want to happen is that the goodbye message will be on the screen until the experimenter comes along and presses a key to get rid of the experiment. And uh, I'm actually going to use the space bar again. So what, instead of creating a new object, I can actually append an existing item that we've used already, uh, this one here called space response. I just click on the tick, and that adds in a second copy here of space response. It's a good time to point out here, actually, that when you reuse objects in this particular way, if you change one instance of those objects, you'll actually change both of them. So keep that in mind. If you change one of a reused object, it's going to change all other occurrences of that object as well. I'll demonstrate that one in a moment. So we've got the general structure of our experiment here. So we've got the instructions. I'm just going to wait for a key press. We run our main experiment, and then we get the goodbye message, and it's going to wait for a key press. So let's uh, set some basic information inside of these particular objects. So I'll click on the instructions, text render, and I've got some messages. Uh, oh, it asked me for my message. This is basically where I'm going to put my message for the instructions of the experiment. So let's put those in now. So that's our instructions set up. So I'll do exactly the same thing now for the goodbye message. And there's our goodbye message. Next thing to do is set up this space response just to make sure that Open Sesame sits there and waits uh, for a key to be pressed. Uh, if we look, actually look inside of the space response object, you see the timeout is set to infinite, so it's going to sit there for an infinite period. Uh, we want the participant to press the space bar uh, in order to um, move on from the instructions or if we want to get rid of the goodbye message. So what we can do is in the allow responses type in the special word space. Uh, we can use individual keys or we can use uh, particular keywords like space, 
you can find out what all of these keys are by clicking on list available keys which is where you get key names that are valid obviously we're just collecting um, uh, just a key press here to start the experiment so there's no such thing as a, a correct response for this particular uh, item here so I'll leave that one blank now the one I edited was this one just underneath the instructions uh, it's a good time to point out if I click on the one underneath the goodbye you see it's also got space in there if I flip between the two you'll see they say the same thing if I change this one down here so for example to the A key uh, if I go back up to the one underneath the instructions you see it's changed that one as well so that's what I was pointing out earlier that uh, it's very important to uh, know that if you've reused objects in this particular way that if you change one you're going to change the other one that's actually quite an empowerful uh, uh, feature so uh, use carefully it can actually really help you uh, designing your studies we can actually give this uh, experiment a quick run now actually so I'm going to say just run full screen we get asked for a subject number when we uh, try and uh, run the experiment so I'm just going to click on OK and there we go there's our instructions presented press the spacebar I'll press a few other keys and nothing happens but if I press the spacebar there we go it's jumped straight through now to the um, goodbye message at the end of the study and uh, press spacebar and that's it we're out So that was the uh, basic structure to the experiment, but uh, I'm just going to run it again quickly just to point out something. If we look at the instructions here, they're all located in the top left hand corner. Uh, we might want to have a title in there like Welcome to the Cat Faces Experiment. We might want to be in slightly larger text. Uh, and we actually might want the whole thing centered on the screen, not just bunged up in one corner. And that's actually pretty easy to do inside of that form text render uh, object. So I'm going to get out of the experiment now by pressing the escape key. There we go, get the message saying the escape key was pressed. I'll go into the instructions uh, object. And what I can do in here is actually use some basic HTML formatting in order to set some properties about this particular text. So let's say I want to make this text slightly larger. I can type in, and I'm also going to put the text in bold. The HTML tags that you can use are actually specified on the cogsci.nl uh, website. The second thing I want to do is actually make my text centered. And the way we actually can do this is actually a little bit more hidden. What we actually have to do is go over to this button over here that allows us to edit the script directly. So if I click on that, this is basically the code that's being run to display this particular text on the screen. And right down at the very bottom here, we have this thing that says widget 0031 label center equals no. If I change that no to a yes, that will now uh, center the text on the screen. So I'll say apply and close. And if I run the study again now, don't want to say anything. There we go. We've now got the uh, Welcome to the Cat Faces experiment is now in bold text and it's slightly larger than the rest of the text. And it's also now neatly centered. If I press the space bar we get the thank you message which is uncentered because I haven't changed that one yet but I'll do that quickly now so the goodbye change that center to yes apply and close run full screen and there we go that's uh, all our instructions and goodbye message neatly set up now so that's our global structure of our experiment defined. What we need to do now is actually define the trials themselves and also define the trial procedure, basically presenting the fixation dot, the blank screen, and the picture of the cat face. I'm going to do the latter first because it's basically replicating what we've been doing up to this point already. So I'm going to click on the trial sequence sequence object and basically just add in that particular sequence uh, of events that we need to take place for each trial. Uh, the first thing I want to add in is a fixation dot, so you'll find it in the list here, fixation dot, and I'll add that in. We get asked to rename it. I'm just going to leave it actually as the default because it pretty much sums up perfectly clearly what this particular object is. And we're also only going to use one of them anyway, so we don't have to worry about multiple fixation dots. After we've presented a fixation dot, the next thing we need to do is present a blank screen somehow. There's multiple ways you can actually go about doing this. But I'm actually going to use uh, an object we've already been using up till now, which is the text render object. 
Instead of having any text in it though, we'll just have no text and that's going to basically present a blank screen to the participant. So I'll go down to the text render object and I'll add that in. I'm just going to call this blank because that's actually going to be a blank screen uh, presented to the participant. Now, of course, in the instructions and in the goodbye message, we have to use that keyboard response to make Open Sesame wait until the key was pressed. Similarly, we have to make sure Open Sesame waits here as well. Otherwise, it will just blank the screen and jump straight into the cat face picture. To do that, I'm going to use a advanced delay object and add that into the experiment. And I'm just going to call this uh, delay 500. That gives it a meaningful name to say we can have a delay for 500 milliseconds. I'll say OK. So that's added that into the timeline. The next thing we want to do is actually display the picture of the cat face to the participant. Uh, to display pictures, we use the sketchpad object. So I'll select a sketchpad and add that in. And I'm going to call it cat face because that's actually what we're going to be presenting on that particular object. Just like the instructions and the goodbye message, we need to basically get a response now from the participant. So the cat face, uh, cat face sketchpad item will display the picture of the cat face, but it won't actually collect anything from the keyboard. So what we need to do is add in another keyboard response to collect some response from the participant. I'll add that in and separate this one from the other one. I'm going to call this cat response. And the final thing we need to do is after the participants made a response, we need to add uh, an item that indicates to Open Sesame that we want it to write the data to the disk. And to do that, we use something called the logger object. And I'll add that into the sequence. I'll just leave it as a default name because it's uh, only one we're going to have in there and the name sums up what that object is. It's worthwhile pointing out at this point, actually, that whilst reusing objects uh, is uh, pretty useful for many parts of your experiments, reusing the logger object is pretty much vital. If you create a new different logger item each time you have a different sequence, your data file will become quite a bit of a mess. Uh, so it's a good idea to always just append the same existing logger item throughout your entire experiment. So that's our sequence basically set up. Now what we need to do is set some properties uh, for each of these objects. So let's start with the fixation dot. Click on that. Uh, we want this to be on the screen for uh, 500 milliseconds. So I'm going to change the duration to 500. The foreground colors inheriting it from the main experiment setting where we had the foreground color being black and the background color being white. So we don't need to change those. And that's any change we want to make on the fixation dot. That will just display a fixation point for 500 uh, milliseconds and then move on to the next uh, object which is our blank form text render. By default, we get your message in here. So I need to delete that out. So this is basically now going to render no text to the screen. Right, it's going to be a, a blank screen basically presented. Then the delay, we want uh, Open Sesame to sit there and wait for 500 milliseconds. So I need to change the duration from 1000 down to 500 milliseconds. And then we get uh, actually presenting the picture of the cat face itself. By default, sketch pads have a duration of key press. Now, the problem with this is that if we just leave it with key press, we're not actually going to get any keyboard response uh, from the participant. Uh, instead, instead of the sketch pad waiting for the key press, we actually want the keyboard response object to wait for the key press. So the way we do that is we specify the duration as being naught milliseconds. Essentially, this basically means to open Sesame run this object, display whatever you need to display on for this particular item, and then move straight on, uh, which in this case would be moving straight on to the keyboard response. So that's the duration set up to actually put the picture of the cat face onto the screen. Let's rearrange the window a bit. Uh, we need to click on the image tool and find the center of the screen. We've got a nice grid layout here. So if we just click here, this will be in the uh, center of the screen and it brings up the file pool window. As mentioned earlier on, uh, we can actually add pictures, sounds and so forth to our experiment and place them into the file pool. And it is quite a useful system because it does mean that all our pictures go hand in hand with the experiment script and we don't have to worry about losing any pictures and stimuli when we move from one computer to another. What I'm going to do here now is add in all the cat face pictures that we're going to use in this particular study by clicking on the plus button. Uh, in my documents folder, I have all the cat face pictures. 
here they all are they're named uh, f01 to f20.bmp for the female cats and m01 up to m20 for the male cats so i'm going to select all those pictures and click on open and here they all are all our cat face pictures now in the file pool what I need to do here is just select any other of any of these pictures. Uh, it doesn't matter which one because we're actually going to come back to this slide in a moment and actually modify the code for this slide to make sure that we're changing the picture of the cat face on every single trial. So I'm going to select F01 for the time being and click on select. And there we go. The next thing is to click on the uh, key, uh, keyboard response object for the keyboard response. Correct response is something that we need to define on every single trial. So that's something we're going to come back to in a moment after we've defined our trials. But I can set up at the moment the allowed responses. Uh, we're allowing the participant to press either Z or M to make their responses. And the way we specify those two keys that can be pressed are by literally entering them in separated by a semicolon. So Z and M. That will mean that if the participant presses any other key apart from Z or M, the, uh, the keyboard response object here, this cat response, is actually going to ignore it. Finally, in the sequence, we had the logger item. By default, the tick is for automatically detect and log all variables. Personally, I tend to leave it on that one. It does mean that your data file is going to be quite extensive, uh, containing a lot of information you don't actually need, but it does also mean that you don't lose anything either. So I'm just going to leave it set to the default for that purpose. Next thing we need to do is actually set up our trials. And we do that inside of the loop object. The loop object has four main items that we need to set up. We have to say what item we want to run. Well, we want to run the trial sequence because that's just what we've defined there uh, for our trial procedure. So I'm going to leave it on that setting. Uh, the next option is for cycles. It's set to one at the moment. This should basically refers to how many trials that we're going to have or how many unique trials, I should say, that we're actually going to have in our experiment. Uh, we've got 40 cat face pictures, so we're going to have 40 trials in here and there we go we can now see that this uh, window down here is now going all the way up from uh, 1 up to 40 at the very very bottom the order is going to be random which is a, a good idea to have random selection and repeat is set to each cycle one times we can actually change this for example to two times and basically what this do is trial sequence will be called 40 times 2 or 80 times in a random order of course, we didn't want to split cat picture once, so each cycle only once. Trial sequence will be called 40 times one times, basically 40 trials in a random order. We now need to specify our variables. Uh, on each trial, there's going to be a certain number of items that are going to be different for every single trial. The most obvious one is going to be that each trial is going to have a different cat face picture that we want to display to the participant. We're also going to have a different uh, response each time. You know, some, If it's a female cat, we're going to have one keyboard response, which is the M. If it's a male cat, they should be pressing Z to get the trial correct. So I'm going to add those variables in by clicking on Add Variable. Uh, I'll get asked to add a variable name, optionally followed by the default value. I was going to call this one F name, which is going to respond to the uh, correspond to the file name that's going to be used uh, for that particular trial. I'll click on OK. And we see F name now appears. And I'm going to add another variable in called CR which is going to stand for correct response. This is going to hold the value that, or the key that the participant should press in order to get that particular trial right. The next thing to do is actually populate this uh, mini spreadsheet now with all of the trials in our study, which is what I'll do now. So there are all our trials defined. As well as entering in the file name, I've also entered in what the correct response should be. So for all the male cats, the CR column has now been filled in with uh, Zs, and for the female cats, they've been filled in with M's. What we can now do is actually go back to our trial procedure and actually insert some of this information now into our main trials. So I'll go over to the cat face object. Now this, at the moment, is just displaying this one particular cat face, and basically if we run this experiment, what will happen is we will always get this one particular cat face showing up. What we actually want is for Open Sesame to change this picture of the cat face depending upon which trial we're on. Essentially, what we want it to do is on each trial, go back to this particular list here, pull out whatever's in the F name column for that particular trial. So let's say, for example, we're on trial number six. We want it to pull out mo6.bmp and insert that into the sketchpad object rather than this uh, particular cat face picture here. The way we do that is by right clicking on the uh, cat face picture here and select edit. 
and it brings up here the script that's actually being run. It actually makes quite a bit of sense what it's actually doing. It's drawing an image at 0, 0, which is the center of the screen, and with the file name there, with the scale that's centered, and we always show this one. What we can do here is end, uh, edit the file name from fo1.bmp, which is a uh, literal file name. That's the one that's always going to load up, fo1.bmp. And we can actually tell OpenSesame to go back to that column called F name and find out whatever the file name should be to insert into this particular uh, part of the script. And the way we do that is that we put the variable name, F name, and we enclose it in square brackets. This basically, as I say, is telling OpenSesame, go back to that loop item, look for the variable called F name, and pull out whatever's in that particular column for this particular trial and insert it in here. It'll basically mean that the picture of the cat face will change on every single trial because the value of F name is changing on every single trial. When I click on OK, you notice that the cat face has now disappeared and I get this notification, one object is not shown because it is defined using variables. The next thing I need to change is going to be in the cat response. Uh, we can now specify what the correct response should be. Just like defining what the cat face picture should be, we want OpenSesame to go back to the uh, list and pull out whatever's in the CR column. So we specify exactly the same way. It's CR and we indicate it's a variable by putting it in the square brackets. And I'll save the script at this point. And there we go. We should now have a working experiment that's going to present 40 pictures of cat faces to participants in a random order. Uh, they're asked to press Z or M whether they think they're a male or female cat and it will finish off with a goodbye message. Let's give it a go, see what we get. So I say run full screen. I'm asked to enter a subject number. So when actually running the experiment for real, you can actually enter what the subject number is in here. And here we go. Welcome to the cat faces experiment, blah, 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 blah. All the details about how to run the study. Uh, so I press the space bar to get started. There's our picture of a cat. I'll press the key. There we go, fixation dot picture of the cat, and so on. And that'll just keep going for all of the 40 trials within the study. I won't, uh, I won't bore you with all of those. So I'll escape out. And there we go. That is a simple experiment uh, in Open Sesame. This final section of this tutorial is going to have a look at something slightly a little bit more advanced, and that is how we can actually use some conditions uh, to specify whether certain objects can be run or not. In particular, the reason for adding this one uh, into this tutorial is that you might often want to give feedback to participants uh, on each trial to say whether they got the trial right or whether they got the trial wrong. In this particular example, if I go back to the trial sequence uh, order of events here, uh, after we display the cat face and the participants made a response, I'd like to indicate to the participant whether they got the trial right or wrong. Now, if we always say something to the participant, or make some kind of sound or something on every single trial, they'll get annoyed quite quickly, but quite often experiments will have a tone or a message to indicate that they got the trial wrong, uh, useful particularly in learning studies. So in this particular example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a sound that I'm going to play to the participant if they get the trial wrong. So the way we do this is we need to uh, add some more objects into the timeline. We actually, only need to add one object in, and that's append a new item. We need to add a sampler object in. And then I will click on the plus, and I'm going to call it, uh, for a reason that will become obvious later, meow, and add that in there. Now at the moment, it's sitting right at the very, very end of the procedure. Um, it can actually sit there, it doesn't really make any difference, but I'm going to actually make it go straight after the cat response object in there. And it just demonstrates how you move objects about. You literally just pick them up uh, from these handles and just drag them around. So I'm just going to have it straight after uh, the cat response, and then click on the object here to specify what we want uh, the sound file to actually be. So I only specify what the sound file is, uh, so I'm going to browse for it. It'll bring up the file pool as per usual, and I've got no sounds in here yet, so I need to add one. And in documents, I have a cat sound for us. There we go. So I will add that in, and I'll select it, 
and say select. Now, because we're always going to play the same uh, cat meow or whenever the participant gets the trial wrong, uh, I don't need to specify any, specify any variables in there. I can just leave it at uh, sound file. Uh, volume will be at 100%. Uh, we'll have it out left and right at the standard pitch. Uh, we can also specify whether we want it to stop the sound file after a certain period, whether we want to fade in the sound, and also how long it should be. The default is sound, which is basically just to wait until that sound file has finished playing. And uh, that's the options I'm just going to leave this, uh, this option at. Then go back to the trial sequence. What will happen now if I run the study is that if we look over on the right hand side, it says run if always. That basically means I'm going to get a cat meow no matter what the participant does. It's always going to give me this meow, um, regardless of whether the trial was right or whether it was wrong. What I want to do is find out some way of saying to Open Sesame, run if they got the trial wrong. And the way we do that is we have to look at the uh, cat response and see whether they actually got the trial right or not. Now we can use the variable inspector uh, to help us with this. We'll open up the variable inspector and open up the variables a little bit further. And it's a bit difficult to fit this all on the screen over here. But if we look at here, it says uh, correct cat response and its value will depend upon the response. Of course, you can only be right or wrong depending upon what you've actually, uh, key you've actually pressed. And it exists in the item cat response. So it's referring to this particular uh, object here, this particular keyboard response. The thing that I need to note is this correct cat response. Basically, was this object here correct, uh, cat response, was it correct or was it not? If I go back here, I can then basically say run if, and remember that these are variables, so they must go in the square brackets, run if correct cat response, the variable equals zero, i.e. that they got that trial wrong. If we wanted to play this cat sound when they got the trial right, we'd have it as a one. But I just want it when they get it wrong, so I'll select that to uh, zero. And now we'll try running this experiment again. So we'll run full screen. I've got to save the data. Uh, it's a good point to point out here that when you start running the experiment, you'll normally be asked for where do you want to save the log file to. Uh, I was going to dump this one on the desktop. It was subject number zero. So I'll enter that in, click on save. So here we go. These are the instructions again. And I'll start running through the experiment. Now that one I do know is a male cat, so I'm going to get this one right. And when I press the Z key, no sound. This one is also a male cat, uh, but I'm going to deliberately get the trial wrong and press M for a female. And we get the sound to tell us we're wrong. This is also that she's a male cat, so I'll get this trial wrong again. There we go. And this is also a male cat, so I'll press Z to indicate the trial was right. And we don't get any cat sound. So that's an easy way that we can give feedback to our participants using some uh, conditions.